everybody, and welcome to a magnanimous Wild Ride with Steve-O. This episode is awesome. I'm here in Tennessee, I'm at my ranch, and today I learned archery. So let me just quickly fire an arrow through my living room. Yes! And what can I say about Jelly Roll? He's the coolest dude ever. And we talk about stuff that he's never even talked about. His new music coming out, spoiler alert, and uh, his tour he's going on, uh, testifying in front of Congress, his Super Bowl ad, like all of the felons that he does cool stuff for. Um, man, it really is one of the greatest episodes that we've ever done. So let's get into it. Hey, what's up, y'all? My name is Jelly Roll. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. If you didn't know anything about me, I hope you understand that I'm mostly in satire. But more importantly, I hope you take the time to go to JellyRoll615.com. I am doing my first full arena lap around America. It's huge. Madison Square Garden. Some big destination shows. Got a lot of festivals I'm doing. If you don't see my city, it's because I'm playing a festival there. Just cruise the website. I love you. New music coming really soon. I hadn't announced that anywhere. Breaking news. New music coming I'll pro I don't know when the album will come out, but I'll start releasing some songs really soon, like in the next 30, 45 days. Okay. All right, man. I'm fucking hyped. Hey, if you've got if you've got a drink, you don't need this here. Then, no, we're uh, good. I'll, I'll take it. it. What is All it? Right. Is this a sparkling water? It's just sparkling water. You got yeah. one of these that are still by chance? Uh, oh, okay. I'll it drink it, it too, though. No, I'm good. I got a water right here, but yeah, whatever, figured man. for all intents and purposes, it looks like these are. Yeah. Okay, here check, we check. go, man. I'm just going to fire it up, man. Dude, we're, we're hyped. We're so yeah, stuck. I'm hyped too, dude. We're I'm fucking hyped. fired up, man. This is fucking really cool. All right. Ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, I'm going to just look at it. It's 1223. Ladies and gentlemen, people of the universe, I bring to you Jelly Roll. Hey, yes, baby. <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah, dude. It's so exciting about, like, how... I mean, just getting to meet you is epic. We've never met before, right? Never, never met. Never met. Um, Big fan, though. Well, thank you, man. Uh, uh, what's, what's it? Uh, what, what, do we, what, what's, what do they say in our era? Uh, Long-time listener, first-time caller. You <laughs> yeah. know what I'm saying? Long-time listener, yeah. first-time yeah. caller. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that <laughs> a lot, man. And uh, I, I really... Um, it, it's an honor, dude. I'm, I'm a big fan of yours. Um, and by, by bringing the studio to the guest, so often we get to, like kind of see people in their element, like see their had their house and stuff. Yeah. And uh, here we are at your house, and uh, it's pretty badass. Yeah, dude. Let me tell you the coolest thing about it. So I have a two-year-old uh, Basset Hound. Yeah. And he grew up on tour with me. So we, we named him Bus Dog, Bussy the Bus Dog. So his name is Bussy the Bus Dog. And he has spent of these two years of his life, and we've had him since he was seven, eight weeks old, he spent more time on a bus than he has not on a bus. So as soon as he seen this through the crack in the door, he lost his mind. <laughs> he was like, it is time to shine. And I thought he had to use the bathroom. I brought him out here, and he just wanted to get on the bus. He just kept trying to get on the bus. He was like, home is here. So it was really cool, man. Did, does, does he do well when the bus is moving? Is it oh, he's great. He wouldn't know it any other way. Man. It's like you talk about, you know, you think about a puppy that's been on a moving bus since he was eight weeks old. Yeah. He don't know anything else. When he's here is when he's losing his mind. He's like, why are not more people here loving on me right now? Because he's the bell of the ball on tour, right? I mean, you know, he takes <laughs> yeah. over every amphitheater and arena in America. It makes it his little backyard. It's a shame, man, because my, my dog, Wendy, I, I found this dog in the streets of Peru and um, brought her all over. She's great on airplanes. Um, and, and I was in comedy clubs, but then when like I, I graduated to theaters and started traveling on a bus, she's just terrified of the bus. Oh. So I can't, like, I just stopped bringing her on tour, oh. which, which broke my heart. She wasn't oh, always terrified of it, though, right? She was, dude. She was always terrified of the bus. Fine with planes, though. But uh, I'm not here to talk about me. That's right. No, yeah. That still hurts, <laughs> though, <laughs> man. Thank God. Thanks for sharing, though, dude. That sucks, man. I wouldn't. Yeah. I love it. I guess just because we raised him on the bus, he don't know any other. You know what I mean? When he's home, he really is. He's kind of ticky and weird. But you get him in the bus, and he just immediately Should've gets him to his now. spot. I, dude, I wouldn't know if it was a dog friendly bus oh, or dude, not. Oh, dude, couldn't be more dog friendly. He would have lost his mind. He came straight in here like, "This is where I belong. These are my people." <laughs> All right, <laughs> we're gonna hit a timeout. Yeah. To get the dog. 
So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you want to let, let him in? Yeah. We'll, yeah, we'll get a bus. I'll send my text Come right on, now. Man. I'll get busted. That's great. I love we've, never, it. we've never done a timeout. Love yeah. it. Yeah. No, we don't have to do a timeout. We can keep rolling. I'll text yeah, my nephew. Yeah, no, it's all good, man. We're like, uh, you that, that, bring, that. this is going to be so funny. Bring the bus dog to the bus. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, no, he's still a puppy, so it's, it's going to be a short lived ex, uh, ex, moment of excitement. The chance <laughs> yeah. of him sitting and chilling with this many people are rare because this is on, on tour, he'd be like, everybody's just going to gush over me. Yeah. He's the best, though. I don't know what it is. I think it's something about having him on tour that makes me feel more at home. My wife travels with me, like yeah. our daughter comes out on the weekends. Emotional like, support. Yeah, it's like really, yeah, it's like he, there's truly this, uh, she brings her dog and. My niece comes out every now and then, and she'll bring the other dog from the mm-hmm. house, and my nephew, and it's like, oh, this my whole home is with me here now, and it's really, I don't know, it just makes traveling. But I still, like, still aggressively tour, though, Steve-O. Yeah. Like, I still tour, like, old-school rock and roll. Like, I mean, <clears throat> I remember right when I started going to uh, theaters, and, and I was renting a bus, um, like there were a couple of spots where like, oh, Jelly Roll was here like the day before. So that tells me that like back in like 2021, like you were in regular theaters. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. And uh, have just blown up since then. Now it's just purely arenas, huh? Yeah, for sure. Now it's uh, it's crazy. We doing a full arena tour in the, in the fall. Tickets on sale today. Big day for me, actually. Yeah. Um, I've been in there like a nerd calling my rep at Live Nation like every 15 minutes. Like, how's this one doing? What's this? I'll just keep looking over the tour dates. I'm still I always referenced that I was the kid, and this is where we get real, that had a birthday party and would give a RSVP to everybody in the school. I'd pass out 200, come to my birthday party cards, and wouldn't get one RSVP. Ah, uh, man. So, you know, I just wasn't a super popular kid. So, like, that uh, childhood trauma comes out of me a little bit on tour announcements. They're yeah. not a lot of fun for me still mm-hmm. because you're just like, is this the birthday party nobody shows up to again? You know what I'm wow. saying? Do you even think about it when you put them on sale? Am I the only person that flips out like this? Dude. <laughs> no, 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 okay. yeah, dude. <laughs> like, back in the you know beginning of my comedy tour, and, and I've been working with Scott over here for 10 years, they used to send me ticket counts like by email. To, oh, yeah. to, 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 and, and I told them, like, I'm like, do not copy me on ticket counts because it would like affect me so much. I'm like, mm-hmm. I just don't want to know. You know, tell me like, just book interviews, book interviews and do it. Like, yeah. and that that's psycho. Yeah. Yeah, but net because they do like where the percentage sold out. Do you have that on your oh, reports yeah. where it says like, oh yeah, fifty eight percent sold. Oh yeah, no, I get them. Uh, I get them twice a week. Yeah, and it's. So- <laughs> I get a Monday count and a Friday count. <laughs> it- I, I even do it for festivals that I'm playing now that I'm headlining them. If the festival will give me a ticket count, I want to know because also sometimes I just want to, I'm nervous to make sure, are we doing our job? Yeah. Like that's what yeah. matters to me is I want to be held accountable too. Like if there's a low ticket count somewhere, I want to be able to call my man and go, yo, I, like, do I need to do drops for this? Or do I yeah. need to call some local radio stations? Like I'm not above going down there and getting on the news, dude. Do they just not yeah. know who I am there yet? Or what can I do to help this? You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. Like, yeah. Have you sold any out yet as of today? I think we got a couple of plus ones in the in the wings, so it should be cool. I, wow. God willing, it looks like it's going really well. How many? Yeah. Uh, Everybody's telling me it's going great. How many dates? Forty. That's nice. a good one. Wow. Yeah, rock and roll style, every arena, crypt. I mean, dude, I'm nervous. I mean, this is. I got palm sweaty talking about it, dude. I mean, I'm talking <laughs> about. You. Man, you see me? I'm like, yeah. we're, like I'm sorry, my whole energy shifted, and all of a sudden, I was like, I shouldn't have brought this up. I fucked myself. Oh no, dude, it's all good. <laughs> um, and uh, I mean. Candidly. We're doing Madison Square. Like, we're doing the things. Like, we're doing crypto. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we're doing Cri- proper. Crypto's a staple center, right? In downtown yeah, yeah, LA. Yeah. yeah. Where it used to be. Wow, yeah. that's huge. Yeah, it's, it's a big, yeah, it's like, you know. Yeah. Crazy. How many tour buses do you roll with? How many trucks do you have? Is it like compared to your theater shows to the arenas? It's got to be way mm. bigger, right? Yeah, for sure. I think when we were in theaters in 21 and 20, the end of 20, we were playing early theaters in 19. So, like, the end of 19 in the southeast, I was blowing out, like, the 1,500 and 2,500 cap rooms. And then we were playing, like, the bigger theaters coming out of 21, and we were doing probably, like, three buses and two trucks. Mm -hmm. And I think our last amphitheater tour last year was, don't I mean, dude, I don't know, man, 10 buses and 15 trucks or something. So it's going to be, and and I'm I'm really, 
I don't know what this one's going to be yet, but I know I'm bringing the thunder. I know that I set the stage. You know what I mean? I know I put the budget aside to be like, yo, like, I took haircuts when it matters. When it was like, no, dude, I want to like, I don't want to just play Madison Square Garden. I want to be remembered for playing it. Now, mm-hmm. now tell me mean? if this is true. It, I I heard that when it comes to your crew, when you're when you're on tour, you only hire felons. I think a lot of people would jump to the conclusion that working with felons is risky. But I'm here to tell you that life is full of risks. For example, when I was firing the arrows through my living room, I didn't even hit the target most of the time. I put a bunch of holes in the back of my fireplace. And that's just one of many examples of why it's important to get life insurance. I'm telling you, like you can save time and money and set your family up with a financial safety net by using Policy Genius. This is the way to get the best coverage for life insurance. And they've got policies for as little as $292 a year which give you a full million dollars worth of coverage. It's crazy. And the way to get it is at policygenius.com slash Steve-O or click the link in the description. I think it's just a good idea to acknowledge the risk in life by protecting your family and getting life insurance. The best way to get life insurance is through Policy Genius. And if you go to policygenius.com slash Steve-O or click the link in the description, you're gonna get an even better deal. So take care of your family, save time, save money, and get to policygenius.com slash Devo to work with the licensed and terrific insurance agents there. You're gonna get the best deal. Now let's get back to it. Yes, absolutely. Felons, uh, recovering addicts, um, broken. People like me, I, I checked both better. boxes there. Yeah, yeah, no, you're welcome, dude. <laughs> yeah, even then, we, we have an opposite drug policy. You can fail drug screens. We're just concerned with what you're failing for. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you smoke a little reefer? No problem. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. cool. You're welcome on here with us, dude. It's like, we don't mind stuff. So it's like, we're kind of a come. I, would, I encourage y'all to come see a jelly show because what's happening behind it is just as wild as what's happening in front of it and on the stage. All four sides of that stage are a circus at all times. Love it. I love it, dude. It's 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 a complete misfit bunch. Even yeah. down to like who I picked to go on tour. Like we took one we're taking Warren Ziders out this time. I just love his music. I love how dark and like he brings theater back to his shows, which is cool. And we're bringing this girl named Alexandra Kay, who's like an independent phenom. And it's like, you, I curate these. Last year, I took Josh Adam Myers out on my amphitheater oh, tour. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. That's right. You told yeah, me that. Yeah, he did a version of what the comp, what the jam is, but mm-hmm. like his own, you know, like the version of it yeah. with, with his guys. So it's cool. He, I, I, feel he, like, I feel like a Jelly Roll tour, like the perfect tour manager would be Mike Busey. Yeah. Right? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> like he's like the perfect <laughs> You know what? Yeah. The cool thing. Fucking... Yeah, listen, I talked to Mike about this one time. He is a tour. He is there is a part of that tour that he could manage. Yeah, I'm sure. He's the tour manager. Yeah. But there is a part of that tour that he can manage for sure. Yeah. He can get that job anytime he wants. It. He will know exactly. I thought about hitting him one time about one of these tours because we do a barbecue in the back. My guy, Country, that I've known forever uh, through Three Six Mafia and Juicy J and introduced me to him forever ago. He grills every day, so like we smoke ribs and like pork butt and like shoulders and stuff every day like mm-hmm. we smoke and grill every day for like a hundred guests and we feed the local crew barbecue sandwiches and we set up a bar and we set up a bunch of tvs and watch football and fights and stuff on saturday go, night dude. it's like a real vibe and i was yeah. like this is where i need mike Busey. he should curate this party <laughs> yeah. it should be you know what i'm saying uh-huh. it should be mike Busey's party he's the best man <laughs> yeah mike Busey is such a rad dude and and it's thanks to mike busey that that we're sitting here today yeah absolutely and that he's mike is who he is as a sweet human yeah. like i love the mike that you don't see on social media too like mm-hmm. the one that'll sit with you and get like deep for sure and like tear up with you and like sit around a fire and like lay it on you and you lay it on each other and like it's like a release you know it's like he's also a guy that i love maniacs I love people yeah. like us that are just like, I'm going to figure this out. I don't care. I'm going to dedicate my life to figuring it out. I don't know anything <laughs> else but figuring it out. And he figured it out. Mike Busey famously owns the Sausage Castle. And uh, I, I had this project that um, I, I, 
the, my bucket list project, and I wanted the opening sequence. I wanted to be dangling from a helicopter, flying around, and, and ultimately let go and land on the roof of this moving bus. And, uh, and so I hit up Mike Busey, like, hey, man, I need a place to film this opening sequence. He's like, oh, yeah, dude, we can get a helicopter here. We can, like, <laughs> so I'm on the roof of the sausage castle. The helicopter drops the rope ladder. It's flying me around. And Mike Busey literally got the fucking uh, telephone company employees to come out and install telephone poles, like a whole bunch of telephone poles yeah. to put up uh, electrical wires that weren't actually hot, but with like transistors, or like special effects guy to make them blow up when I get dipped in the water. And first they get me wet, then they send me through the electrical wires while I'm hanging from the helicopter. And he made all that happen, like without me even asking. Yeah. No, he's the guy, man. Um, he's one of the best dudes. We shot our early music videos with him. Like, I met yeah. Mike down in Panama City 15 years ago. I just got out of jail. Me and Lil White are down there selling mixtapes, and me and Lil White have a song from uh, Hypnotized Camp. He's from Three Sixes Camp. Um, been one of my best friends forever. One of the first guys gave me an opportunity. And we're down there, Mike Busey's having a pool party. Just doing some Mike Busey stuff, really. He's just kind of down there, Mike <laughs> Busey. Being, just being he's Mike just Mike Busey. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what I'm saying? And we bump into him, and White threw him through Three Six Mafia. And he was like, yeah, man. Let's just shoot it. And I think he just had a camera and just shot yeah. it. You know, like just on some like fly stuff. And this was early in YouTube. This was like URL, YouTube.com. <laughs> you had to have a hardwired computer somewhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was a different era. So like it was, it was, we were early to that party. Even, even down to like YouTube is still my baby today. Like I still look at YouTube like the girl that had my heart first. Sure. Because we were so early to that platform, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Speaking a little white, you've had support from 3-6 early on, right? Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. They've been super supportive. Dude, of you. I mean, man, from the month, for, dude, it's, I mean, we're talking about probably almost two decades now. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, we were so immersed in that culture of hip-hop, too, at the time, like, Haystack being from here, Cool Daddy Fresh, uh... Pistol later on, Quanti Cash, and like I watched all these things. So then I kept up with what was happening in Memphis because it was so close. So like, then we started hearing Eight Ball and MJG, the Three Six Mafia early, like the early Mystic Styles, like the mm -hmm. super dark stuff. You know what I mean? And it was like so rebellious in that culture, and it was so different. And then I finally meet the guys, and they're fucking awesome. Like Juicy J, you know I took. Um, DJ Paul and Juicy J Three Six Mafia did seven shows with me last year. Wow! They don't do a lot of shows. Like yeah. as Three Six mm. Mafia, they just don't do. You know, they're just they've been doing it so long. I mean, them dudes got Academy Awards. They've sold hundreds of millions of records. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're not they're not really going out and performing. It's not a thing that they you know they came. They were like, yeah, we'll do some shows. It was cool as hell. Sick. It's uh, we, we filmed Wild Boys with Three Six Mafia before they won the Academy Award. Mm -hmm. It was like two thousand four. Yeah. 2004, and uh, I guess in, in Memphis, I remember it was in Tennessee. We were filming uh, blowing up anvils, sending them all high oh. in the air and fainting goats and yeah. stuff. But, Steve, how did you become so close with DJ Paul? Because when, when we saw, uh, when I was with you at the the The, the juggle gathering of the juggle. Yes. DJ Paul. Oh, my God. But the dude, gathering, the like, gathering dude, like eight or nine times is the best ever. DJ yeah. Paul was so excited to see you. Like, where you guys had, like, a weird relationship. going. Like, yeah, how I did mean, you guys meet? DJ Paul, we gotta get DJ Paul on here, man. Oh, he's, he's, sure. he, he's, he's, he's so funny too. He's one of the funniest fucking humans ever. Yeah. He, he hit me up um, before the the gathering. He said that, that he wanted to try doing stand up comedy, and he says, "Do I have any advice?" And I said, "My advice for anybody doing anything is to start doing it. You know, like just don't wait. Like get into it." And uh, he came over to my house, and we, you know, worked on a bunch of material for him. And I, I don't know if he ever even did it, but I saw a thing that uh, you said that you had been trying to do stand up at at Zany's in Nashville. Oh yeah, and, and that it like it, it wasn't going well. When when was when was that? No 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 I, no no we we go to Zany's all the time. I've okay. never done stand up. I would, so let me tell you, my relationship with stand up comedy is it is my favorite thing on earth. And I love it because I love things that I don't think I could do. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Like besides like run up a flight of stairs. Or, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you know what I mean? Like I think in that's general, why. like things that I look at, like man, that's a skill set I'll never possess or have. Yeah. Or like when just like I love going to a jazz bar because I'll never play as anywhere near as good as the worst player up there. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like I look at a comedy that way where it's like I'm just a huge fan. I'm at Zany's all the time. It's like my high. It's my favorite club in town by a country mile. But I would never have the courage to stand up there. Dude. Uh, okay, I, maybe I, I, no, I no, no. interpreted that wrong. Yeah, I was yeah. thinking if you needed a comedy agent, Mike Busey would be great. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's the best guy for me. Yeah, yeah. 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 He got two jobs in one day in the killer old camp. <laughs> it's good. Um, the, back to the thing. I'm stoked that the Vinny asked you about the the hiring felons. Oh yeah, no, um, no, no, for sure. Our food trucks the same way too. Dude, yeah, that's the. That's the yeah. thing, man. Like, um, you know, I moved to Tennessee, mm -hmm. right? So I, I got a, a, a big ranch in uh, in Tennessee. And my neighbor, who drove the bus here today, he's a retired fire, firefighter. You know, he drove 45-foot-long fire trucks. And so I'm like, dude, my neighbor can drive the bus for me. Like, <laughs> epic. And, and he also um, runs a food truck. Like, so, you know doing his whole food truck and he's always going to like give out like a thousand meals here a thousand right. meals there you know doing his whole just so like charitable and community oriented and he told us on the way on the way here he said you know uh he said jelly roll has uh like a bunch of food trucks and he only hires felons to work them true story <laughs> absolutely great. yeah it's so yeah rad. only second chance guys and i put the it's in so what I did was even deeper than getting a food truck. Some guys from where I'm from, they got the food truck. I just licensed the name and helped them facilitate because I wanted them to have their equity in it. Nice. Right? I, I, don't, I want to break a culture of hiring people. I want to create a culture of people starting businesses and then yeah, hiring dude. people and then them people showing people how to create businesses. You know what I mean? As old, as, as old and as cliche as it may sound, it's the uh, I can give you a fish or teach you to fish kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like... And it was really cool with me because they came to me with the idea. So a bunch of felons from my neighborhood came to me like, yo, we got this idea. And I'm like, it's the best idea y'all have ever had. I was like, this is crazy. We should do it. And it's uh, it's immediately trickled and, and spread. But can you explain what that is? So so they have the company. You license your name? The Jelly Roll name and the brand, yep. To their truck? Absolutely. And then they just run it and you get paid a 100%. A and then they whatever. can franchise out with the other guys. Yeah, for sure. But I, I, I think whatever royalty I took, I don't know if I took one at all, but if I did, I think it just goes straight to a charity. Any money he got out of it, he gave to charity. That is an example of being magnanimous. And being magnanimous is good for your mental health. You know what else is good for your mental health? Getting into therapy. And that's why I'm very glad that this episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Being in therapy helps. It helps me work on my relationship. It helps me work on my anxiety. It, it just helps, and it helps a lot of people I know, and I think it could help you too. If you go to betterhelp.com slash Stevo, that's betterhelp.com slash Stevo, you can get 10% off your first month. And it's so easy to do. You can do it online. You can do it in the comfort of your own home, and you can do it whenever it is convenient, and you can do it with any number of very licensed, very wonderful therapists. And if you don't like your therapist, then it, you can switch it so easily. It's something that can help you. And again, I encourage you to go to betterhelp.com slash Stevo to get 10% off your first month. Take care of yourself and take care of your mental health. Now let's get back to it. That's great. Yeah, it's just something we're just trying to build for the guys. I just want to, you know, I know what it's like to, <clears throat> I was talking to my guy the other day from Impact Youth, and you know this because you've dealt with a lot of second chance people. Y'all all have. That's what I love about what y'all do too is that regrouping in life is so hard, mm -hmm. especially when you live in such a fog that you don't realize how much you don't have. And then you wake up out of said fog. And then you come to terms with like, oh, I don't have anything. Mm. Like, I don't have an ID. I don't have a T-shirt. I don't have a pair of shoes. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you like the clothes on your back is what I know a lot of people to leave rehab with. 
the clothes on their back is what I know a lot of people to come out of jail with and the whatever they have from jail. <laughs> I know people that were so afraid of what was going to happen on the other side of jail, they brought what was in there with them. Their last couple of Zuzus and Wham Whams, like they were just like, I don't know when I'm going to eat when I get out of here. Like the Green Mile guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, I've seen it in real, right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, it's like, I've, it's fucked. It's fucked. It's like, I've seen it in real life. So like, I understand that any opportunity a guy can get in that situation is like yeah. a big opportunity. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. My neighbor, Chase. Oh yeah, I just gave him a big hug. I love him. I said, "You whip that big bitch." <laughs> I just gave him a hug. I said, "That's how I opened our conversation." You whipped yeah, that big bitch. <laughs> yeah, he uh, he also told me that uh, that your like the toy drives. Do you do that every every year, Christmas? Just yeah. giving thousands of toys to the kids. Yeah, for sure. We uh, I think it was tens of thousands of homes that was affected by it this year. It was huge, it was like one of the biggest ones. Affected the mayor by came by, the, by our toy drive. Oh, okay, so okay, Walmart good. partnered this year and they gave us um, like drop boxes and they donated tons of toys too, but they gave us drop boxes in every Walmart in Middle Tennessee. So my dream, I don't know if I should blow this, but I'll just be honest. My dream and my fingers crossed is to have a bigger partnership with them this year that spreads through the Southeast and eventually across America because we've seen the impact of it this year. So great, man. It started as my daughter's idea is what's even cooler. Yeah. When my father passed away in 2019, that year she said, I want to do a toy drive. I want to do some buddy's toy drive. And she partnered with a couple of people we know that own bars. And, like, all the bar backs would just put it in there. And then, you know, mm -hmm. a couple years into that, we did it every year. And then it would spread throughout the bars. It kind of organically worked its way into, like, us making a thing of it. Wow. The, my, my guy Isaac just brought up on the TV – uh, an image of your largest holiday toy drive. Where the hell is that? That looks like 30,000 people. Uh, that that image to the right is that, yeah. yeah. This one, oh yeah, that's rock. That's uh, that was rock on the range. That was a festival. All but right. that right there is a parking lot in Walmart. I don't know, oh, there five, you go. ten thousand people or something. <laughs> as many that's people as we could stuff in a Walmart parking lot. They had to redirect traffic. Man, I, I you know I got to be careful. And we did that at three different WalMarts in Middle Tennessee too. So yeah, this is we, them them trucks, yeah, man. And then, of course, we I have a big thing about, like, putting my money where my mouth is, too. So, I mean, we, you know, we bought, I don't know, 100 grand of toys, 200 grand worth of toys, too. We, we did everything we could on our end. Damn. I hate artists that'll, I, I appreciate people that, I, I don't know, you shouldn't use the word, use the word hate. Oh, God damn it. That was me. I was like, other, other people oh, do this. Oh, boy. I hope y'all were, record, I hope I were recording I early when he was, like, trouble. putting the phone on sound. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Jesus. I'm sorry, guys. Um, it, okay, I mean it's 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 epic, dude. And and I I, I want to be careful not to like really like get on your dick too hard, man. But uh, I think that that I mean, what's you're the most lovable dude in the world. <laughs> it's, it's epic. And we watched uh, your 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 whole speech in front of Congress, mm. and we were all like, we're like, man, he's just killed that yeah. you know like there was uh it, it was it was i mean clearly like you you, you had some notes that you were looking at right. you know to, to stay on track but you weren't like reading that like it, that, that, no i no, was it definitely prepared <clears throat> yeah it, it sounded like it came from the heart yeah. too. that was heartfelt yeah. as hell and it and it was just so on point yeah, yeah. how does an opportunity like that come oh no about? Hold, is that my wife? oh no here goes the bus dog the bus hey, dog hey yeah. bus dog hey, hey buddy. bus dog Hello. He's like, I'm on the bus. I'm on the bus. <laughs> yeah, right on, man. Thank you for bringing the dog. Yeah, hey, bus bus. Hey. Hey, good boy. Come here. Is that, hey. is that his name? Is Yeah, his name's Bussy the Bus Dog, man. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, <laughs> look, watch this. Bussy. Watch, yeah, bus bus. <laughs> hey, bus bus. Hey, bus bus. He's still a hey. puppy. Hey, He's yeah, almost dude. two. Hey, bussy bus. Bus Smell, bus. Smells like a puppy. Well, he's also a hound, hey. dude. He is, dude. They're just natural. You know what I'm talking about. Them mm -hmm. dudes. Bus, bus. Look at him. He's a hound dog, so he comes straight in and sniffs everything. No, dude. He grew up on a bus, though. He's Bussy the bus dog. My wife calls him Sir Bussington. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the Congress Y'all don't mind him hanging for real? No, oh, dude. I love it. Um, I love it, man. Yeah, the Congress thing was... Pretty recent, yeah. Yeah, it was very recent. It was January. Um, and... Uh, they gave, you know, I got a call from CAA and they said, hey, man, we, I'm, I am so anti-politics. So it's like there's yeah. such an irony of how God works. 
mm-hmm. of like a few things in life I hate more than politics. You know what I mean? So it's like they call and I was like, you want me to do what? Yeah. They were like, we want you to speak at Senate on behalf of a bill of fentanyl. And I was like, I'll tell you something. I'll make a deal. I will speak on behalf of the crisis that is fentanyl. That's what I'm willing to speak on. I don't know a lot about bills. I don't know a lot about stuff like that. I was like, but I, I would love to come get their ear to talk about the fentanyl crisis because I'm starting to wonder if they know there's one happening. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I'm, as a, I'm starting to become a concerned citizen that feels like maybe they just don't know. You know what I'm saying? You know, maybe yeah. they're so caught up arguing about other shit that don't matter that they're completely missing these 200 people that are dying a day. I'd love to come speak. And, man, I was telling my wife, I don't take a lot of things serious full disclosure i just kind of you know i'm just kind of go with the flow guy i took that opportunity serious it, yeah. it, it could, you know yeah i really it took it evident. serious you you said something that like hit me really hard you were like uh as someone that was part of the problem i now want to be part of the solution mm, yes, and that that was sick that was great no i mean it was i think it was important to kind of i don't know i felt like i had an opportunity to speak for a lot of people that aren't spoken for in that moment Sure. And I took that the most important. And I think about all the people that even are like me that have changed their life, have went on to do better things that just don't have the platform. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or the hope, like more of the hope to be like, also, I want to make change and cool again. Yeah. Like we've got really stuck in this mindset that it's like, I want to make it just cool to change your mind about stuff, man. It's cool to listen. It's cool to talk. It's cool to be open. Like this is all cool. You know what I mean? Like let's, yeah. let's conversate. Like, you know what's you cool know? is admitting when you're wrong. Ooh, man, that's the coolest thing. <laughs> and, and doing it in a real no-but way. And just yeah. be like, hey, man, I blew it. Yeah. I said, all up simple, I was a part of the problem. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I want to now be a part of the solution. You I'm, know? I'm feeling attacked here. I was just about <laughs> to look over there. Uh, I mean, so, so during your speech to Congress, you were encouraging them that, you know, please pass this bill. Like, I want you to pass this bill. Like, but I wasn't clear on what the bill was. Like, yeah. was uh, so, and I said this in the speech, too, because it was important to note this. I, well, I said this later in the questioning was the bill is to prevent flow of fentanyl. And you okay. heard in the speech, I said, gentlemen, I do believe that this will help stop the supply. But if we don't put a foot forward to stop the demand... We're going to be spinning our wheels in the tire. We're going to spin right, our right tires in the, in the mud. And that's because the bill's focused on, like, flow. Like, uh, whether it's coming through ports or over the border. Right. Either mm-hmm. way. And this was a bipartisan thing. It wasn't just about the border. It was coming from ports in um, China and Japan. They were finding different ways. And they were finding money trails to follow it. So they were able to say, hey... This shipment was paid in this much crypto. It turned out to be this much fentanyl. And they're trying to now take the, the right to take that money and put it towards community resources and law enforcement. Hmm. So it's like it was really just kind of a it was a banking committee bill. And I read the whole bill and my sister and me sat down. She's a really smart college graduate and uh, explained it to me. So I knew what I was talking about. And I understood the bill enough to stand in support of it, but also understood that it was the equivalent of you know, focusing on one fly in a house full of horse shit. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? And that's why I said it's important that we are we, we, we focus on stopping a demand and a flow. You can't just stop a supply and not end on a demand, you know, not focus on a demand. Right. The, the, um, now, the flow, as I understand it, there's uh, it, it's precursor drugs that are coming out of China. And the problem with it is that these precursor drugs are perfectly legal in China. Right. And then so China sends the precursor drugs to Mexico and then the cartels like put together all the, the you know, whether, whether it's the uh, counterfeit uh, pills that are like, oh, like pressed pills. Yeah, they yeah. look exactly like yeah. Xanax, except it's fentanyl. Yeah, or, yeah, you yeah. Know, or, or you know, mixing it like whatever. And then, so th- it feels like there's multiple different issues with the flow of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I really like the the track the money uh, piece of it. That seems like kind of a an at the root kind of a thing that would be more than just like a fly. Yeah. That feels like a, a systemic kind of overall approach that's, that could be very helpful. Yeah, it was um, it was a very, I think they had, I mean, they had the full vote. It just passed into whatever. It seemed very bipartisan. But my focus was I knew I had five minutes to 
yeah. talk about what I thought was the most important was less the bill and more about the crisis itself. Sure. Because I, the, this is what I wanted to do, and this is how it worked out. I just want to create a conversation that people already know is happening but aren't talking about. It's the elephant in the room kind of. I'm walking the red carpet of the Grammys, right? First time at the Grammys. I'm, I mean, I'm floating. My feet hadn't touched the ground all day. Every person, whether it was a security guard that worked for the crypto arena or a photographer that pulled me to the side or an A-list celebrity like top five streamers in the world, uh, top, uh, video game streamers, all taking me to the side going, hey, man, I seen your fentanyl testimony, man. That's so powerful. This affected my family in this way. Getting recognition for a job well done feels good. And I'll tell you, every time I take a blue chew tablet, I do a very good job and I get recognition for it from my lady. What can I say? I'm proud of it and I love it. And I think you might love it too, because in my view, it is a lot of fun to take a blue chew tablet. Why? Because it's got the same active ingredient as both Viagra and Cialis, except it only costs a fraction of the price. And it's chewable and it's delicious. And if you go to bluechew.com and use the promo code Stevo, you can get an entire month's supply of blue chew tablets completely for free. All you pay is five bucks for shipping. That's if you go to bluechew.com and use the promo code Stevo. You quickly consult with the medical provider on their website. And in a couple minutes, you've got your prescription and an entire month's supply of Blue Chew tablets is on its way to you for free. All you pay is five bucks for shipping. So if you feel like you want to get recognition for a job very well done, then let me recommend Blue Chew tablets. One more time, it's bluechew.com with the promo code Stevo. Now let's get back to it. Yeah. And dude, I mean, I was to the point of tears multiple times throughout the day. People are coming to my table all Grammy week. That's all I kept hearing. And I was like, this is what I wanted, God. Yeah. They're not ashamed of it right now. You know right. what I mean? I brought a normalcy to talk about and brought a human element to it. You know what I mean? To be like, because that was another thing I wanted to point out was we also need to change how we look at addicts, period. Because we're not, we have been guilty as America of not humanizing drug addicts. Oh, that's their choice. They did that to themselves. They made that decision. That's why 200 people die a day, and mm -hmm. we don't talk about it, right? And when you start looking at it like, no, that actually was my uncle. He was actually yeah. a great guy before. You should have seen him. He was actually lit a room up. I never met a drug addict in my life that didn't light a room up sober. You know what I mean? I can tell you that. I've never met one in my life yet that wasn't the funniest person in the room, the most charismatic person in the room, every one of them that were sober. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I wanted to bring that to the table that day, too, to be like, yo, we got to start looking at this different, too. And also these random cases. This fentanyl shit's gotten so weird, it's like you can't even party. Like, I fear for kids in college mm -hmm. right now. Like, stuff that's basic college shit, basic high school stuff, it's scary. Well, they, I have a 15 and a half year old daughter. Yeah, I'm scared. I was just going to ask, like having a daughter that young, what kind of conver like, what does that kind of conversation look like? Like you have to be nervous about her going to high school, then college, you know, and, and, and just having regular college parties and but like they have like test strips yeah. for fentanyl readily available yeah, for people. That's for, weird. Yeah, totally. But I mean, it's probably really helpful. Yeah, but it's, it's definitely also helpful. Like, but I feel yeah. like most well, we college put them kids. On the buses too. Yeah, but, but I feel the like test strips. Yeah, for sure. But yeah. like, uh, why? Because there's like, what do you? What drugs do they test? Like, is it in the cocaine? Is it in the whatever? Yeah, whatever drug you can put any drug yeah. in the, uh, in a little thing of water valve. Yeah. You put a little piece of it in the water valve. It's almost like a COVID test in this really weird way. Really weird comparison, but the best way to put it is like it's one of those kind of things. And I put them in every bus, and I put Narcan on every bus. It's just something I do. I also put a defibrillator on every bus. Yeah. It's just it just I I know that I can't prevent some people from doing drugs. For sure. I know that. But I can lay out every possible scenario for you to do it the safest way you can on, these, on my watch. Yeah, you I mean, I, I mean? I, I've heard people, you know, in meetings talk about, like, when you go into a bathroom and uh, you, you see, like, the, the hypodermic needle stash thing to, like, put your needles in there, mm -hmm. when you're just a civilian and you're looking at that, you're like, what the fuck? But then when you're hearing these people talk, you're like, dude, thank you guys so much for putting that in there. Like, 
I don't have shame for just dumping these into a trash can or something like there. So it's like a it's a weird catch twenty two of like what like what do you do with people that are going to use drugs anyway? You know, yeah. you got to at least have some safety precautions in place. Well, we got to quit focusing on the flies and focus on the horse shit. And when you're in a house full of horse shit, you can only do it one scoop at a time. Man, <laughs> you know what I mean. And that's the that's the, that. that's the end of the day. You know. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. And I, my scoop, I'm, I'm scooping. I don't know what everybody else is doing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I tell yeah. you, more shit's coming in all the time. And maybe I'm just in a perpetual cycle of scooping while more shit's dropping on me. But I'm definitely one of the scoopers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I don't do nothing else in life. I want to be the scooper. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Dad, I, I love it, man. Um, so you, you just uh, went to your first Grammys. That was recent? It was crazy. It was a month and a half ago. I'm still floating from it. I got to do the Grammys. Then I went to Hawaii for a week to do uh, American Idol Mentor. And then I went to the Super Bowl, you which is crazy. You had a Super Bowl ad? You had a Super Bowl commercial, dude, with Uber <laughs> Eats. <laughs> yes, is that not crazy? I was like, this is wild. Um, yeah. And it was, dude, it was unreal. I think I saw you... Uh, um, you were at the UFC Apex the the night before yes. the yeah, Super yeah. Bowl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went out. Um, I'm sure you don't mind me telling this story. I went out with Dana that night. Yeah. Taylor Lewan took me out to meet Dana and Hunter Campbell, and we gambled. And I gambled with Expose and a couple of streamers that gambled for. And I had one of the best days of my whole life out there, dude. I mean, my day started at uh, Michael Rubin's Super Bowl party, which is the Fanatics party is insane. I did not feel like I belonged there. There was real celebrities there. You know, when you get around real celebrities, you're like, I am not a celebrity. That's a real celebrity. You know, my friends are like, you're famous. I'm like, uh-uh. I've been to some rooms where I was a, I was, I was the fly. You know what I'm saying? For sure. But uh, then I went straight from there to watch the fight at the Apex, which I'm a big UFC fan. Ah. But have y'all been to the Apex? Mm-hmm, you sure. see the fight there? Yeah. Dan. It's a different experience, dude. It mm-hmm. is. I mean, you heard body shots. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you heard the agony. Like, you heard the breathing. You could hear them breathing mm-hmm. on each other in the third round, just, like, panting like a mm-hmm. like like Bussy, just panting. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? And it was a different way to experience the fight. And Dude, I, I went to the Apex when it was, like, a bubble in, like, the heat of oh. the pandemic. Oh, the, like, they, hey, that's when it was kind of pimped out, though, right? That, the, when no, they had, yeah, like, when, the booth, the, like, the, 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 the Vegas the nightclub? Mm-hmm. The VIP balcony yeah. with the private bar. Hell yeah, yeah they yeah. did. It was still pimped out. It was still, you know, Dana does everything right. Dude, so I left the there, best. and I went to see Bert and Tom at the MGM. Nice. And it was killer. Gillis was there. I mean, it was just an absolute, uh, Trevor, I mean, it was a great, great night. And uh, ended up gambling with them boys and won, like, I don't know, 70 grand or something like that. It was a crazy night. <laughs> <laughs> One of them nights. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. So wait, so, so yeah. you went... Apex to then, then to the I went Fanatics party, Apex, Bert, Tom, then Gambler Dana. with Dana, yeah, and exposed for sure. And Cody on that's the day, yeah, Nick Merckx. <laughs> it was awesome, yeah. the best day ever. I was like, I don't know if I'll ever have a better day. And then next woke day, up, went to the Super Bowl. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was yeah. like, Who am I, dude? I was that's like, great. These people don't know. <laughs> and then, dude, the Super Bowl was fun, dude. Yeah. I just watched it on TV like a regular person. And, yeah. Well, and- I'll tell you what. I'm going to do that next time. I do. I left the Super Bowl with this. I will. Um, I, if I go again, it's because the Titans go. Okay. You know what I mean? Because it's a, it's a thing. It's a real big. It was like a lot. I, I was overwhelmed a, a little bit. We might be a couple of years off of that. Tennessee yeah, Titans. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's going to be yeah, probably a decade. Yeah, <laughs> at best, if ever. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but if we go, dude, I don't care what it costs. I'm renting a suite. We're all going to dress dude. in tight and blue. We're going to, well, I'll cry. I I'll look like one of the Detroit Lions fans when they just went yeah. to the <laughs> NFC Championship. I cried for them, by the way. I was so right. excited. I was dreaming, which I'm glad who went, went, because I love uh, George and I love Travis. But I was dreaming of a blue collar bowl. I was dreaming yeah. of the Baltimore Ravens and the Detroit Lions. Yeah. For I mean, sure. I was dreaming of it at night, dude. I was like, Man. what an experience that would be to watch just the middle of America. Just kick ass one good time. You know what I mean? On a yeah. national scale. You know what's crazy is that I picked the Detroit Lions to be my team that season in the first week. And they made it all the way to the championship, the divisional. Mm. And uh, <laughs> God, I was rooting for them, man. Yeah. I think the whole world was, for the record. I think unanimously. I kept seeing memes on Instagram that said, People in America who want to see these teams go to the Super Bowl, and it was everybody wanted to see the Lions except 
the city of Kansas City, mm-hmm. yeah. the city of of uh, uh, San Francisco. Yeah, but it was cool. It was a re- everything else was a really good experience. The Super Bowl was just. I think after the, the two long weeks, too, I was just burnt. And then you walk in, it was such an overstimulation. The, yeah. the halftime performance was incredible in the room. I never seen it on TV, which I heard it looked really good on TV, too, because it was shot tight. But, like, <laughs> in the room, it was fire. <laughs> Everybody knew every Usher song. It was really cool to watch. Man, I... Have you been to a Super Bowl? I've yeah. never been to a Super Bowl, no. They're, they're, it's a thing, dude. I don't know if it's like that because it was Vegas or they're always insane. I'm going to guess that it's always. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what would you do with Shaq at some Super Bowl? We, I flew to Tampa for the the Shaq Bowl or whatever. It was oh. like a, a kind of a pre-Super Bowl thing, <laughs> like uh, on a totally different you know place but 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 but, you know whatever i i have a a couple thoughts the watching it on tv man tony romo blew me away with this commentary on the super bowl just the way that he made it so like kind of relatable where he's like okay in this situation i would want to do this you know like it it, like it, it just felt so much more like a commentator like giving the actual perspective of a player than of a player that is now a commentator, you know, mm-hmm. like it was just re- really, really impressed by Tony Romo, and I'm really, really impressed by the way that the NFL uh, for the whole season. I mean, they I guess they've been doing it, but as soon as the game ends, any game in the whole NFL season, as soon as it ends, they put up on the NFL YouTube channel uh, a condensed version of the game. Where like that two and a half hour, three hour long game is now like nine to fourteen minutes, depending. So like there's just no bullshit. Yeah. You watch that condensed nine to four, and while you're watching these condensed games, you know that if they show uh, a kickoff or a punt, then it's gonna be a bang in return. You right, know, the right. sense of shit's gonna happen. Yeah. You know, like they only and it's just. There's no, like, stop for the flag and figure out what the penalty is. Right. And because they make it so digestible, because they make it so uh, just consumable and enjoyable, like, I watched more football this past season than I ever have in my life. I watched, like, every goddamn game. Oh, yeah. And then by the time we started getting close to the playoffs... Like now, I like care so much because I've watched every game that I end up <laughs> not, now. Now I don't even want to watch the nine minutes anymore. Now I gotta what? Now that we get to the playoffs, I gotta watch the whole game now because yeah. it's because I'm so invested. <laughs> so by the end of the season, because they gave away those condensed versions on YouTube, by the end of the season, I had a subscription to to Peacock, <laughs> to Paramount Plus, yes. to you know, already had the ESPN. But, Every single possible platform that you could watch a full-length football yeah. game on, I was subscribed to by the end of the season. <laughs> so, way to be NFL. They, they, they're like the crack dealer. They, they gave me the red. <laughs> they gave you a little taste. Little, <laughs> gave me a little hit. Gave me a little hit. And then I just had to have Yeah. That's how I became an NBA fan and a Power Slap fan. Oh, how about that? Yeah, because the NBA yeah. will just show the highlights. Like, yeah. I guess when I'm just scrolling, because it's hard not to watch. You've been to a Power Somebody slap? doing something. I haven't been. I heard they're crazy. I want to go. I was supposed to go to one the Friday before I went to the Apex, but we couldn't get a, a get in from Hawaii in time because we were doing that American Idol thing. But uh, I watched it. All, I became a fan of it For because sure. I kept seeing enough of it and enough of the same people to be like, yo, this is kind of crazy. Yeah. But it's the same way I feel about the NBA. I went to a game and seen it live, which is like anything. That's how I got into hockey. You go see a hockey game live, and you're like, yo, this is crazy. And they fight. And they fight, and they yeah. hit that wall way harder than you think, yeah. and they're skating way faster than you think they are. Mm-hmm. TV makes them look graceful. Mm. When it's in person, it looks dangerous. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're like, oh, these two dudes hit each other right now. They're going down. You know what I'm saying? Like, for sure. For sure. Everybody tells me how much fun the Predators games are. Dude, it is a hoot and a half because it's, one, a hockey crowd, which is already a little rambunctious, like they'll cuss a referee out in unison in a chant. Doing an arena, it's awesome. It is so, but then you add that to the fact that it's in the middle of the South. Yeah. With a relatively newer team. Buddy, what are you doing? You ran like you just used the bathroom. Come here. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> oh, wow. He knew. Hi. Hey, Mama. This is what this is the luxury of being outside of my house, Steve. Oh, you get our dogs, you get my yeah. wife. It's a whole circus. Are you hanging around long enough for a kid to get off the bus? Hello there. This is awesome. Is this not yeah, cool? Super cool. It's inspiring. That's yeah, what yeah, I was yeah. thinking too. You, you want to jump in here? Oh no, I gotta, I gotta go do podcasts. I just wanted to come say hi. 
Hey, I appreciate you so much. And and you let, want to let, bring me a kiss? Let Let me ask this: You guys really got engaged and married in the same night? Oh yeah, in uh, Vegas. Yeah. In we Vegas. agreed to get. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. At a Deftones concert, it was totally rock and roll. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he asked me. Yeah. I, I love your jacket. Yeah. Hi. Hey, thank Hi, you. Bud. We'll see you soon, too. Yeah, for sure. Time. Thank you so, your so much. Your jacket looks great. Hi, you guys. Say, Mama, look, the bus dog's back on the bus. I know. <laughs> he feels this at home. Awesome right we, uh, we, we, we had some uh, some input from the great Mike Busey. Mm -hmm. Yes. He, uh, he told us to ask about uh, Bunny just straight supporting you. Oh, dude. So... When I got with Bunny, when we mean support, I mean like financially. Like I was, I had a, I just sold my my van. My, I had this like '97 conversion van I was touring out of forever. The high top ones, we called it Bertha, and it, it's like four transmissions. That's what in. this is called. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I, I named this Bertha. Yeah. Bertha it makes sense, right? I <laughs> called our first one yeah. Bertha. This makes me so happy. Kindred spirits. And I had Bertha everywhere. The big white van. And I finally, I think four transmissions in, I was like, it's over. I've dr drugged too many trailers across America on too many tours. This van's done. And, and that I, van, you just straight lived in it, too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I went and rented a car, and I didn't have a house anyway because I lived in the van. So now I had a rental car, and I was like, I don't know what to do. So I was just trugging across America to shoot videos. I was just living it. You know what I mean? I each slept, and I didn't do nothing but it. I didn't have a life outside of music. So... um Bumped into her and I'm in a you know and I'm, I'm full disclosure with her. I was like, yo, this I'm doing bad. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> like, you should know. <laughs> For sure. She was like, oh, I know. I met you a year ago and your most prized possession was a van. I was like, and it's gone. I was like, you know what I mean? I was like, that's it. Do you know how much that van meant to me? And now it's gone. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I was like, and I think I'm going to have to find a way to get custody of my daughter. And she was like, what? And I was like, yeah. And she was like, and I'll never forget this. She goes, no matter what happens with us, I want to help you get that girl taken care of. And that was like such a moment for me with us. I normally cry when I say it, but um, it was such a moment for me that she was like, that's where she was in that moment. She mm -hmm. was like, pretty much like, hey, you're kind of a shit show and this might not work. But I'm going to get you stable. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I felt like she treated me like a little pound puppy. She at least agreed to at least rehouse me. You know what I'm saying? Wow. And um, we, of course, we ended up falling in love and got custody of that same little girl. And almost eight years later, that little girl will be here about an hour from now. She'll be getting off the bus and talking shit. She's 16, so she'll be talking shit. Wow. She'll be 16 in two months. Bussy, what are you doing back here? Bus, bus, He's here. just getting comfy. Okay, good boy. Never yeah, mind. he's on the seat. Right. So, so I, I'm 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 almost reluctant, but but Mike Busey included it as a question to ask. He says, "Ask about threesomes." I don't know what that means. Oh, dude, listen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> Early in me and Bunny's relationship, uh, and we're not past it now, I don't think, but we're definitely a lot older. But yeah, man, that was a thing. We sh we shot our shot everywhere. We hooped together. We had a Tinder together. Oh yeah. wow! <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because we were selling two or three hundred tickets in club, you know, in cities, some cities, some cities, yeah. five hundred, six, seven hundred tickets. We wasn't worth nothing, so we'd get a hotel room and just hole up like a couple of pervs. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and flip through. Man, I've never even heard of a couple having a Tinder account together. Dude, that's, that's a true story. That's classic. There was a time that well, I'll let I'll let you and Bunny are going to do her podcast. Y'all, she'll I'll, I'll make sure she talks to you about it because she's way funnier than me when she talks about it. But she's silly. Bunny's just like wide open, man. She's um, and even now we're a little bit older, so a little different, but we're still very much in believe in holding a relationship like this. <laughs> And not like this, because mm -hmm. I've held two <clears throat> things like this, and that just never worked for me. So we're just very open and like, it's my best friend. Yeah. And the coolest thing it did for us was it took other women out of the equation for us completely. Because I look at her like my best friend like I would any other dude. Like, if we were at a bar having a drink and there was a hot girl there, 
we're going to acknowledge there's a hot girl there at some point in our conversation as two men. If we're really boys, right? If we've known each other, we're really comfortable. It's my best friend. Why would I not tell my wife the same thing? You know what I mean? Like, why would I try? Oh, I don't want to look at that girl's ass. I'm with my wife. It's like, yo, look at that girl's ass. That's crazy, right? Normally, Bunny sees it way before me because she is a pervert. But you know what I'm saying? But it's a, it's been a big part of our friendship is just having that kind of an open dialogue and honesty. You know what I mean? Like, if a girl sends Bunny a boob pic on Instagram, I'll be the first person she sends it to every single time. You know what I'm saying? It's the coolest thing ever. Now that I look, I'm like, ooh, boobs. I'm like, oh, they're not Bunny's boobs. Cool, too. You know what I'm saying? Bonus boobs. Yeah. <laughs> bonus that, boobs. That, that, yeah, I mean, bonus that, that, boobs. It, that, that's weird, man. Like, can, uh, can you help me understand the Southern hospitality, why everybody's so nice here? I mean, everybody's so welcoming, and they're so open, and they're like, it's not like L.A. Everybody's, you know, more closed off over in L.A. But here, everybody's just like, yeah, I'll help you. I got my neighbor to help me do this and do that. It's like, it's just a different world over here. Yeah, it's just a, um, it's more of a community. And this isn't a, a bash against L.A., but those big cities are so big that it's hard to find community. You know what I mean? It's like, and I worry about that for some of the cities in the South that are growing so rapidly, but it's that old Southern shit. Also, most of us that are really from here really grew up that way. Like my daughter still serves and ma'am's people. And, you know, we're just, you know, I just think uh, there's, my dude says it best is, what would your daddy say if you didn't open your, open Bunny's door for her? Mm. You know what I mean? Like, and that's a real thing. Cause in that era, that was like, insanely disrespectful that was like slapping your wife making her open yeah, her own wow. door <laughs> you know what i mean that was yeah. crazy that was like beating a bitch you know what i'm saying to be like oh i'm not opening your door you know what i mean it's they just that uh that still exists in community especially when you get out like on a ranch or in the farm like old country people mm -hmm. like this little corner i'm in right now is this family where y'all just went up the top of the hill and turned around mm -hmm. just old single family homes right on big land yeah Every one of those homes, though, are family. There's a cousin across the street, a sister right here, the aunt's right here, the brother's right here, the uncle's right here. It's five, <coughs> six houses up there. They're not That's huge cool. houses, but they're whole families on 300 acres in the wealthiest county in Tennessee. You know what I mean? It's crazy. So it's in their community, and they're still just as white trash as we are. You know what I mean? Still barrel down there in an old Buick and stop and talk to me when I'm on my walk, and you yeah. need anything, and... We baked something over there. If y'all want to come get some, offer Crazy. you breakfast. You know, they just we we had a car get stuck in the mud the other day, and you could hear it from twelve acres away. A man scream, "Y'all need some help!" And it just <laughs> echoed. It just echoed. Man. And we're like, "Yeah." yeah. He's like, "I'm on my way." You know what I'm saying? It, it just it, this this resonates so much with me because again, my neighbor Chase, who drove the bus, who's candidly sitting right there, I think. Yeah. And uh, it, like he he's next door neighbors with his dad, and his dad's next door neighbors with his cousin, and like it's it's literally everything that you just described. And this past Friday, what uh, four days ago, mm -hmm. I I drove past something, I went too far, so I pull into a driveway to back out and then turn around. And as I back out i don't realize that the grass on the side of the thing goes all the way down so now i'm stuck in the mud <laughs> and oh. like i'm stuck in the mud spinning my wheels and i'm like I, there's i can't get out of this thing and oh. the, like the next person to drive by is is chase's cousin yes you know like, yes. And, and then the next guy comes by he's like hey man you need some help and chase's cousin travis says you got to strap me he says, yeah hell yeah i got to strap him they strap me up and pull me out of the ditch like uh, the coolest thing ever. And then last night, the boys flew in from L.A. I told him, hey, uh, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna run to the, the grocery store. You know, like I'll, I'll be back. And while I'm in the grocery store, uh, you know, Bunny and I figure out, you know, she says it's 1230 today. And I'm like, hey, Chase comes into the, you know, Chase is right there. Yeah. He comes in the grocery store. I get back to the house and my groceries. And, and these guys are like, oh, you saw Chase at the grocery store? Yeah. And uh, they're like, yeah. They're like, like what, are the, what are the odds? Yeah. I said, you know, when you're in Portland, Tennessee, the odds are pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> pretty far. Yeah. 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 I mean, people I, just go above and beyond. And, like, that makes me feel uncomfortable for, like, somebody like, yeah, get the straps. Let me call this person. Help them move your tire. It's like, yeah, you're like, you're like, like dude, that, no, I'll just, dude. Huh? You're like that, dude. Yes, but when people do that for me, uh, I'm uncomfortable with like, fuck, now he's got to call this neighbor to get this. I'm like, dude, uh, it's okay. I'll just well, call AAA. Why, Givers don't know how to receive gifts. Huh? Givers don't know how to receive gifts. Yeah, it's uncomfortable. Yeah, that's the thing. 
Um, I couldn't be happier in Tennessee, man. I wasn't even prepared for how much I was going to love it out here. No, dude, it's it's a different. And even down, you talking about his daddy living next to him. It's probably yeah. similar here. I went and talked to his family one day. I said, hey, this is my dream, too, is to own a bunch of land and live with my family. If y'all ever think of selling, holler at me. And they said, well, you have to talk to whoever inherits it. And then she turned around and said, and I'm probably the eighth generation that said that to the other eight <laughs> people. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, knowing that their kids are already trained, like, we're never going to sell this property. Right. And that's like where in L.A., you could go, and there's, everybody has a number. For sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? Every, you could throw it, there's a number for every, everybody lives in L.A. with a number. Period. Yeah. Right. It doesn't exist out here. People are like, well, no, you can't, I don't care. This land right here is worth so much money right now. And you could offer double it, triple it. You could offer money you think they would not refuse. And these people out here would look you and I in Tennessee and go, pass. You're like, what do I need that money for? <laughs> they were like, what are you talking, what am I going to do? Go buy a more expensive version yeah. of this somewhere? I've been here my whole life. I love it. Yeah. I've carved the woods the way I want them. You know what I'm saying? But, but then there's like, I heard Kid Rock lives here in Tennessee and that he made a deal with all of his neighbors that he bought their land. But even though he owns their land, they live on it for the rest of their natural life. So they've got all the money that they, yeah. they got from selling the land, and uh, they'd still, and nothing changes as far as living yeah. there. Yeah. Well, if he did, it's one, I should ask him. I'll ask him next time I see him because his spread is baller. Yeah. His spread <laughs> is in so – you're talking about, like, goals – yeah. I'll give you an example. I got my first nice house, and I went to go see Taylor Lewan, the left tackle from the Tennessee Titans, one of my really good friends. And he opened the door, and I looked at him, and I'll never forget, I went, thank you for humbling me today. <laughs> I was like, there's a different kind of money from NFL money to <laughs> Jelly Roll play the guitar money. Taylor Lewan would have that same moment at Kid Rock's place. Really? You know what I'm saying? And so would Derrick Henry probably. I mean, yeah. it is like, whoa. So him, the idea of him buying that entire side of Tennessee probably and t the 20 closest properties to him. So you can just, just when you die, I'll just take over the end. Yeah. Till then, I'll probably cut a path for some four-wheelers. That would not surprise me at all. He's also, him and Eric Church have gave me the single best business advice of anybody in the music business. Like, those are the two dudes, if I have a real, like a real pickle, like if I'm fixing to sign a deal or do something a little like, I wonder if I, this is the right idea. Those are two guys I know that'll give me straight advice. Yeah. Kid Rock is a businessman tried and true. Yeah. He, he is definitely that, man. He is definitely that. He, he's, he's cool. Eric Church, too, dude. Eric Church owns a piece of the Charlotte Hornets. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like a country music singer from Spit Bucket, North Carolina. That's crazy. You know what I mean? Like, that's a different kind of business acumen. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, dude. Yeah, we got to get you some Tennessee Titan games, dude. You had not been to a Tennessee Titan game, Steve-O? I have not. Dude, we got to go. They're and the, a ball. The, the, the Predators, too. I've been to the, the, the hockey games in L.A. It's yeah. always a hoot. No, this you is know, way... You're a Tennessee resident now, baby. Yeah, I this know. is way cool. We'll hook you up, dude. The Predators are so good, too. And the Titans. Both organizations are the best. Yeah. Like, yeah. Really good to people. Like Nate Bain is the relations guy over at the Tennessee Titans. He's the homie, homie. And yeah, I love the it. The Predators man. are just the best. That whole building is David, the guy who manages the building. Just whatever. I'm repping Tennessee, man. Come on, I'm dude. We love having you, dude. We'll yeah. get you some Titan blue, baby. We'll get you a <laughs> Predator jersey. <laughs> listen, I, I, listen, if you got time before you leave, I'll go show you my where my studio's getting built. Love it. But every wall is a Tennessee something. Nice. Just for that reference, I want yeah. you to see it. It's like I am so <laughs> proud to be from Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah. Because I am from a city where everybody who ever made money in the music business came here to make it. Yeah. Like, to be one of the insiders, like, I look at Nashville. Except for Young Buck. Yeah, for that, which is my buddy. Yeah, but dude, I love Young Buck. He's the best, dude. He was the, he was the first rapper in Nashville to go platinum. Yeah. It, like, super inspired me in a way that was, I've always been, a, if you can see it happen, it can happen guy. Yeah. Like, if I can get close enough to see somebody do it, then I can assess it. And normally, nine out of ten times, I'm like, man, we got the same two legs and two arms and one head. I should be able to figure this out. Yeah. And watching Buck's video shoot when he brought 50 Cent here, and mm -hmm. 50 Cent had that, uh, he just had the intro of the song. It was Buck's first technical single by himself that I, before Shorty went to ride and everything. I know you're going to let me shine and get mine. I know you're going to let me in with this now. Yeah. And remember at the beginning, uh, 50 hit him with that go, shouty. We back up in this bitch again. We party harder than you could imagine. So he had 50 here for that video shoot. And uh, 
we went down to Lishy Avenue, which was a famous set of projects in East Nashville. And I pulled up with Jazz, the coach, and all my guys from Cross Track because I battle rapped a lot back in the day. I was really heavy in Nashville rap culture. And I stood across the street, and there was 10,000 people probably in these projects. I mean, you could not move. The police couldn't even get in. And there's 50 Cent, the biggest artist on earth, standing there next to Young Buck. And I remember thinking, we're all going to be famous tomorrow. The whole city, we're going to be famous. We're blowing up. He named his album straight out of Cashville. Think about this. At that time, Nashville, Tennessee's population was probably 650,000. I mean, it was a really, it was like the size of Columbus, Ohio at that time. Mm -hmm. So, as perspective for you to name your album about what we consider to be a little city, a little metropolis, was like, I just assumed every rapper in Nashville was going to be famous instantly because <clears throat> of that. You know what I mean? And that was one of them big moments for me where I was like, oh, I can do this. This is, you can, I've seen it now. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Yeah, we had we had we had Buck on here, oh, <laughs> S dude. sitting right there in that seat, and man, he like, I gotta say, for having been through what he's been through, like his perspective on everything, like the, his humility is so like tangible, man. Right. You know, like uh, God, it's just I, I was really impressed with what what kind of a guy he was. Yeah, he's um. And watching him over the years navigate it, deal with it. Yeah. I've got to be a front seat. One of the coolest things in my career was I was able to watch early. I got yeah. the guys I named, Young Buck, Haystack. <laughs> I got to watch up close and personal these guys do good or where they would where things would go bad for them. Like, I'm sure Buck wouldn't mind me sharing this. I learned, my daddy once told me, a smart man will learn from his mistakes, a wise man will learn from the mistakes of others. Wow. I hired a business manager when Young Buck went through his legal problems mm. because that all stemmed from a tax issue. Yep. And me, just like Buck, I come from a, place, a line of people that didn't pay taxes or kind of looked forward to getting tax returns, frankly. So you don't understand paying taxes. And I, to this day, when I hired a business manager, the first thing we sat down and talked about, he said, what do you expect from me? I said, I don't know because I don't even know what you do. But I have one expectation as of today. Never let me get in tax trouble. Mm -hmm. I was like, I watched a buddy of mine go through it, and it was the worst thing that ever happened to him. You know what I mean? Because they ended up coming to seize his stuff, and then found a gun in the house, and yeah. they never found the gun if they were never there seizing the stuff. It was a cause and reaction kind of a thing, and I was just like, man, I learned even just from that. Outside of what Buck's taught me, just being able to watch Buck, mm -hmm. yeah. but to come back from that and have to go to federal prison for <clears throat> some stuff that could have, you know, like just shouldn't even be a problem anyways like yeah right you know i hate to say it i mean i know he's a felon but i mean a celebrity with a firearm in the state of tennessee where he's the only famous rapper ever <laughs> at the time him and starlito were the only two big rappers out of the city in that era so like he's you know he's quite a target at the time right too you know what i mean it's like man i could only imagine the pressure he was feeling yeah and just taking moment. it on just taking it on the chin <sighs> and like what? having an attitude like just a which, what was you talking about earlier where he's fucking up right now? The attitude of I fucked up? Yeah, yeah. That's Buck's attitude. It's like, I blew it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Buck's kind of how I look at like when people are like, yeah. I never justify my cases. I was dead wrong. How about this? The uh, Ron White had the best joke ever. The police have never arrested me for a crime I didn't commit. Yeah. I've never one time been cuffed like, no, I'm not him. I, I didn't do this. Every right. time I was dead, they had me dead center right for sure. and a case to prove it that I couldn't, you know, prove otherwise. Yep. Man, that's that, that's it's amazing. Jump on the grenade, dude. Yeah, <laughs> shout out to Buck, man. Yeah. I love that dude. I do too, man. Yeah. Um so we're, we're, I want to touch on like the, the the jail situation, and I know like the the I, I don't want to be every other podcast. You've, been, you've talked about like being incarcerated on a million million podcasts, and I love it. I just don't want to retread that. What uh, what I'm interested in, like, like when you were in jail, did you have a TV set in your cell? No, 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 just radio. Yeah, just radio. I um. I was thinking about this earlier. I'm still not a TV guy now. Like, we'll watch a show at night because it's something for me and my wife to bond over, but I'm so weird that if it, if I watch the UT football game, I'll still turn on the radio and wow. listen to the 
UT Vols Network because I love that sound better. I love the sound of the stadium in the background. and You know what I mean? I don't know why. I'm just, I, I was thinking about this. Me and my wife joke. She remembers every actor we ever see. I don't remember any of them. You know what I mean? Like ever. Like I'll love the movie and we'll see the guy in person. She'll be like, you love that guy. I'll be like, yeah, what's his name? And I'll only know him by the character. I'm that asshole. Yeah. So I had to quit being that asshole because <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. realize I was an asshole. And I was like, what's up? Nolan from the guy yeah. from ABC's The Rookie. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Who I'm sure is a fucking father and a great guy that doesn't want to be referred to as one yeah. party place. Who's the, the guy you know? from Fresh Friends? Carl, Carlin? Uh, no, Carlton. Carlton. Um, yeah. What's his name, though? Oh, well, I know, about the Rubio. Rubio. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Y'all suck, yeah. too. Like, Rubio, like, oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not alone. You're bad people, too. Yeah, yeah like, <laughs> yeah. somebody told me that they saw him, and they are like, yo, Carlton, and, and like... Well, it's like George Costanza on Science. Yeah, yeah, but I don't think you're gonna bum him out. Like uh, I don't know. Like, and and Alfonso, man, lots of love to you too. Like yeah. uh, I, I I I get it, I get it. But I think that if you're gonna be Carlton from The Fresh Prince and get bent out of shape if people call you Carlton, you're kind of setting yourself up to be bummed out a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I'd find a way yeah. to make peace with that. Yeah. I either just do the dance or you know what I'm saying. Yeah, just fucking, yeah make sure. peace with that. Yeah. Um, okay. I've thought about it. I'm going to be jelly my whole career. I could <laughs> go okay, in. Though. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, it's like I'm fine with that. Yeah, I mean. I it, prefer yeah. jelly over jelly roll. Maybe one day I can do a Prince and just drop the roll. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Damn, that's epic. Um, okay, but now you, you were in and out of jail. Oh, yeah. Right? Like when you first went in, it was like three years. And then like, you were out, but then back in, you yeah. called the revolving door. Oh, yeah. No, so for sure. When you're going back in, and you know you're going back in for like a reasonable bid, like, do you pack your prison pocket? Oh, God. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. No, no. I've never had the luxury of knowing I was going. To oh, okay. Yeah, it's always been a surprise. You know what I'm saying? It's always been. I've, never, I've never turned myself in. It's never been my style. In fact, I was one of those street dudes that looked at it like, you know what? They should earn their money. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what they're getting paid, but come pick me up. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, because Vinny over here, yeah, he, uh, he knew he was going in. What, what, so you got convicted, and then it was he had to surrender. Yeah, I had to surrender. Did you do a weekend? Or yeah, did you no, I did six months. Oh, that was a jail sentence, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a real bid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did you and you didn't you didn't take nothing with you? Did you at least? Oh no, pop oh no, oh no! In? I took I took a bunch with me. His prison really? pocket yeah, my was loaded. Yeah, it was pretty full. Yeah. yeah, I had I I had a syringe up there. Uh, a bunch of Xanax, heroin, tobacco, rolling How many papers. bundles? Of oh, you were trying to start a small business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Getting... Let me show you what's wrong Sessions, with us yeah. as people, right? <laughs> Is that you went into a six-month sentence with 16 years worth of shit in your <laughs> ass. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And that sure. is the math we used yeah. when we were in that situation. It absolutely. Like, this totally makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I, I think yeah. that, that is the, that's the most joyful thing. Um, I, I, I almost feel like we just got to end on that, yeah. dude. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I don't have anything. Like, let's go out strong, dude. That was <laughs> Funny as hell. <laughs> yeah. My man Jelly, dude. So dude, thank you, man. Your, your this tour, was really cool. Your tour is on sale today. Yes, sir. And transparently, this comes out day after tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So as oh, you're great. listening to this, if you got to this the day it came out. Is this my camera right here? That's yeah. your camera right so there. Listen, yes, let, sir. Me, let me do this if you don't mind, Steve. Yeah, please do. I am one of the many people that watches your shit. So check this out. Hey, what's up, y'all? My name is Jelly Roll. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. If you didn't know anything about me, I hope you understand that I'm mostly in satire. But more importantly, I hope you take the time to go to JellyRoll615.com. I am doing my first full arena lap around America. It's huge. Madison Square Garden. It's a big destination shows. Got a lot of festivals I'm doing. If you don't see my city, it's because I'm playing a festival there. Just cruise the website. I love you. New music coming really soon. I hadn't announced that anywhere. Breaking news. New music coming I'll pro I don't know when the album will come out, but I'll start releasing some songs really soon, like in the next 30, 45 days. Okay, you know what I want to do? Vinny's uh, he's a big-time producer of the podcast. He also edits the podcast. Yes. Um, Vinny, I, I, I'm loving Jelly Roll so much. This is what we want to do. When I do my intro, we're going to do my intro to the podcast. We're going to cut to what Jelly just did 
talking oh, about so, his tour. Oh, so it's in the beginning. So the, the very beginning Roger of the that. podcast is Jelly doing that announcement. He just said, and then we're going to cut from that to I bring to you Jelly Roll. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, yeah. so we Easy. get that. We get his promo out there at the top. Love it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Cool hey, shit. Yeah. Dude, thank like, you all for this, dude. That was man, very you know, professional. Like, yeah. Yeah. You've done that before. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have no, I am shameless. Yeah, I have I no it. problem. Keep this clip too. I am shameless. When it comes to <laughs> like, I have, I lived in shame for too long. Yeah, now yeah. I'm in a place where it's like, please buy a ticket to come see me yeah. on the show. I don't want to have an empty birthday party. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. dude, I love it, man. I, I love it. And uh, I heard, but what, what else can I say, dude? It's been, uh, it, it's been an honor. We went in. We really went in on like like your full send podcast, the yeah. the Rogan podcast, like the the Bobby Jones yes. like uh, yes. thing. I was, we really really like kind of went in. I was like, man, I, like I I I felt like a, a lot of that uh, those interviews kind of overlapped with the yeah. same. I was like, I don't want to talk about the same stuff. That's that's and, and I think we did a pretty yeah. good job of keeping mm -hmm. this fresh. Well, and, we, the uh, cool thing about this is I haven't talked about the Grammys, Super, any of that yeah. shit that people have seen me do. Even I haven't Congress, talked about right? the Congress thing, really. So it's like any of that shit people seen me do, I've been kind of dark. I'm not an album cycle, so it's like I'm kind of trying to be a little quiet. Mm -hmm. But I was such a fan of yours, I was like, I want to do it whenever he's available. Ah, you know man, I mean? dude, that means real, the world real, to me, yeah. brother. That no, means I'm the excited because we're, we're, uh, we're probably like 80% done with the record. It's like yes. really, really, really close. Sick. Like it's. You know, I wanted to tell you this, too. That, the, the, that song, uh, I only... Talk to God when yeah. I need a favor. I only talk to God when I need a favor. That is <laughs> such a powerful yeah. sentiment. Yeah. You know, like uh it's un it's unbelievable. And and I, I was gonna ask you this. What uh like you start out rapping and like <laughs> and, 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 and I'm guessing in the beginning when, like when you're a rapper, when you're battling, it's, it's you and Buck and, and, and 50 there and all those years ago, like you're not about to step up to a mic and sing at that point. Yeah, didn't think I had a voice. Yeah. Yeah. And then like, like how recently did you say, you know what, fuck it, I'm gonna sing. I think I was singing my choruses early in my career. So like on YouTube, if you go back as early as like 2009, I guess, maybe six, I'm, I'm singing choruses, but I'm not really singing them. I'm like kind of rap singing them. Like I wake up yeah. every day, I hit my knees and pray. But I wasn't like now, knowing I can sing, I would have sung it more like, I wake up every day, I hit my knees and pray. Right? But then it was like I was scared. So like I wake up every day, I hit. So it's like you kind of <laughs> see it happening slowly over mm -hmm. the years. Yeah, okay. And then you start seeing me getting a little more boastful with it. But Save Me is where I really put my nuts on the table. Yeah. Like, Save Me was that moment for me. It was the moment where I was like, I always reference the YouTube comment, Steve-O. I posted, under that video, I posted, hey, y'all, something to the extent of, like, I know this is different for me. Tell me what you think about it and should it make my album. And it wasn't like, yeah, I know this is different for me. Yeah, what you think? It should make the album like yeah, like yeah. like like a condescending kind of uh, right. rhetorical question. Yeah, I was looking for some sort of support. I was looking for somebody <laughs> to go. This doesn't sound bad at all. For sure. You know uh -huh. what I mean? Because I was still that nervous about because I was singing in a really high register and like really belting. It's like a soulful, just like from the gut singing kind of song. It's one of those songs. I don't know how much y'all know about music. I don't know a lot, but. The biggest note in the song is like the second note of the song. Like I give away, like the like if a song's supposed to take you here, I blow here immediately. And historically, that says songs only go down from there. And everything about it wasn't supposed to be a hit because I didn't know enough about music to know what a hit was. So I'm just writing from the soul. So like I'm <coughs> doubling the chorus. I didn't know you could do a turnaround musically, so we just did ooze in the entire measure of the song to come back around to where I could start the second verse. Mm -hmm. That wasn't strategic. That was me being like, I didn't know I could do a turnaround. Now that I've learned <laughs> the guitar, I'm like, oh, we could have just turned that around and got, uh, 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 I'm gonna be hurt and shatter my hopes and my dreams. What if the night sky could have just turned it around? But I didn't know that. So I was like, well, we're just going to have to let the whole measure go around. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was crazy. And for that song to do what it did for me was when I was like, oh, no, I'm singing. They're, I can sing. 
And it's so... What was the YouTube comment? Was it the comment that you posted? Yeah, you know how you, one? like, post yeah, something, yeah, you do yeah, the yeah, first yeah. comment? Mm -hmm. uh, and the feedback you know, was pretty positive. It was insane. I mean, the video did, you know, 5 million views the first week. It's 200-something yeah. million views now. It's a four- or five-time platinum song. It was number one at country radio. It's number 25 <laughs> at pop radio right now. Yeah, it's yeah. insane. I just wrote it with a dude I've known for 20 years that grew up in a trailer park down the street. Neither one of us were hit songwriters. We didn't know anything about We didn't know enough. It's the most simple guitar structure because we didn't know how to play the guitar, really. Mm -hmm. So he was just like, yo, I can do this. And I was like, that works <laughs> for me. That's it was epic. nothing poetic about it. It changed my entire life, man. It, um, it showed me the power of upload. Yeah. Right? Just the power of just like being like, and somebody said this to me, and I live by this, and you might feel this way about comedy, but a song is never finished we just stop hmm. like a joke's never finished we just we're okay. just done sure because every time you perform it you're you're uh it's evolving and it could evolve forever sure you could never put it on a special there comes a point where you have to go this joke is this, anything i do and it's like i realize that because then the same person told me there's a difference between polishing the paint off and polishing the paint prime so, like, you can polish paint to this pretty gleam or you're three polishes away from fucking it off. Right. You know what I mean? So it's like there comes a point where I could keep fucking with these songs forever. So I just get to a point where I'm like, I'm done with that song and into the world it goes, you know? Yeah, I think that the way that I would interpret that is that uh, you get to a point where you're not uh, like constructively evolving it anymore. Now what you're doing is you're... Uh, like camping out on it you know yeah. you're not now you're now it's becoming your comfort zone and you got to get out of that comfort zone right. and the way that you sum that up is you say it's better to be a comedy factory than a comedy warehouse mm. Mm. you don't yeah, want to yeah. camp out on the same shit just storing it just right. like you know like you mm. want to make new shit it's better to be a song factory than a song warehouse yeah yeah i always tell artists too that if i ask you what's the, your favorite song you ever wrote. And if you can tell me a song that's on Spotify or, or Apple Music or Amazon, you're in trouble. Okay. Your favorite song you ever wrote should either be in your phone or you should be actively looking for it. <clears throat> you All know right. what I mean? That's how I feel. Because the day I tell you my favorite song is Save Me, I'm done. Yeah. I don't think I'm ever going to write a better mm -hmm. song. I've got a favorite song. Peaked. I've married one. It's like my favorite stuff I've ever wrote in my career is sitting in a Dropbox right now. Hell you know what yeah, I mean? dude. And when it goes into the world, I let it live and enjoy that moment for a few months, and then I immediately go, oh, no, my favorite song's on iTunes. Ooh, then you're looking in the rear view. Then I'm trying to be a, trying to be a song factory again, baby. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Back yeah. to writing songs, Papa. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, since, uh, since, since we didn't end at that point, uh, um, Mike Busey said uh, to ask you about the early Dope Boy promoter shows. They were the worst. <laughs> they were the worst. You're talking about the biggest mistake we make as young, hungry artists is the need that we think every opportunity. I know every opportunity is a opportunity, but every opportunity ain't a good opportunity. All money ain't good money. You know what I mean? And we would just, dude, I mean, we, we've had to steal TVs, pull cues. We went to jail. We fist fought bikers that were protecting the club owner. You know what I mean? Just like the shadiest shows. Always a promise and never deliver. Always. And I look back now, I wouldn't stop and get gas near some of those bars I played. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I mean? Like, and I was just out there just fucking arguing with an owner of this Man. bar, this promoter, because they'd have 30 openers. Yeah. And they'd make every opener sell two tickets, and there'd be 60 people there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It was ridiculous. It was the absolute, it was the van days. It was the birth of days. Um, it started getting cool when you start playing real venues, hard ticket spots. Them soft yeah. ticket or like some dude rented a place, you're in trouble. Yeah. When you start playing like like that's when it started getting good. I tell artists, do not fall for the bar trick. You know what I'm saying? Do not just wait it out. You know what I'm saying? Wait it out. Find get be one of four on a 300 person proper venue tour, then go out and play a 500 person bar. You know. I'll never wow. forget. I played every bar in Nashville because that's how I came up. 
I think that, that you get the, you're gonna get the reps out of that yes. though. You know, I mean, you you came up that way. Yeah. Like, well, I tell I, I encourage people to get in front of crowds that don't know them, but find a way to get into the loop because I can tell you what I do know. There's a band that's selling 500 tickets somewhere, or 300 tickets that is in dire need of a one of four. Needs it desperately. Needs somebody because that's what I started doing. That's when it started getting real, and I started learning the business when I started getting into like opening up for ICP or opening up for Twisted when they were doing right. 500 cap rooms and me and White were one of three. Mm -hmm. It was, no, we were two of four or something. You know what I mean? It was like, I was one of four on the ICP tour and we didn't play a venue more than a thousand people. Right. You know what I mean? And I was one of four. I got paid 50 <coughs> bucks a night or like 200 bucks a night, but I learned the business out there. All you right. know what I mean? In the bars, whew, go, you're right, go do them. I, I, I will, I'm open to the concept, Steve-O. Go do some bars, I just but think don't get stuck in a bar yeah. circuit. It is dangerous. Go play. I guess when I look at bars too, is like go play Tootsie's. You know what sure. I mean? Go play a bar. Like I'm with that, but like man, that bar circuit is scary, dude. But I'm, why I, I, though? I'm because people are like fighting and they well, can't I, hear you, and they like what? Well, what yeah, is it's it? like it's yeah, just it's like it's Roadhouse it's and fucking. Yeah, oh, we went to Roadhouses, dude. There's a club called Ground Zero in Spartanburg, South Carolina. It's the most dangerous place I've ever been as far as fist fighting. I mean, them rednecks fought from the moment they got to the park. They started fighting in the parking lot for the doors open. <laughs> it was insane. Yeah. The, uh, I think that the, the comedy comparison there is, hey, you want to get into comedy, get to an open mic. Yeah. You know, the bar is the open mic. But once you're actually doing business, then don't do the... Don't do the comedy in the bar. Do the comedy at a comedy club where it's meant to be happening. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But 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 the I risk that is so gangster. That's why I love comedy so much. I would never have the balls to stand in front of a bar full of people that didn't ask me to be there <laughs> <laughs> with just a microphone yeah. while they're eating dinner and having drinks and be like, so <laughs> what about the election? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Are just like, what the fuck is happening yeah. up here? You know what I'm saying? I Man. played a spot one time that had chicken wire around the stage. Nice. I played one of them old school spots. It was awesome. They was didn't that, throw nothing at me, but it was a real place. Is that the Roadhouse? Yeah, no, no. Spartanburg's called Ground Zero. They're probably going to hate this press, but it, maybe it's changed, right? But back yeah. in the day, dude, that place was a rumble, 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 dude. Man, and the problem is, is at that in our young early careers, especially the way we drank, we wasn't able to be around fights without participating. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We were yeah. those guys. It was like if the fight started getting really big, it's like we should get involved in this. We were always <laughs> <laughs> we were always like, let's pick the side that's losing, yeah. <laughs> even the deck. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah, crazy. It's yeah, God. the difference is they all know each other. So they ended up just kicking our ass. You know what I'm saying? God damn. Yeah. All right, dude. Jelly Roll on Instagrams at Jelly Roll 615. Yes. Follow. The tour is on sale. Right now. JellyRoll615.com. JellyRoll615.com for the Beautifully Broken Tour. You coming out to you. LA? Yes. Part, part He's of the going to Crypto, crypto dog. dog. Big oh, deal. Sick, dude. Huge November deal. 6th. Big, big, yeah. big deal for me. Crypto yes, September 6th. Dude. Somebody buy some tickets, man. I need help. I'm scared. How many tickets is Crypto Arena? I'm not 15, sure. 000, I'd have 15, to look at my, my, 15, my, my, my... Yeah, it's 15 or 16, I'm sure. Sick. And we're selling 240. We're not selling 360, but we'll sell back behind the stage because of the way the uh, thing's set up. So it's going to be big. Hell dude, yeah. what an honor. What a blast. Love you, Thank yeah, you for coming. This is great. Cool. Y'all doing podcast. this at people's yeah. houses is like immediately disarming to it. <laughs> <laughs> We've heard that. Because you're immediately like, I'll talk about whatever. I'm in my driveway. Hey, plus, plus. Why you see everybody get up? Yeah, dude. Was Jelly Roll the man or what? Um, and what can I say to my wonderful street team? You, you beautiful people who stick around to the very end of the episode. Uh, I want to tell you that I'm like, I think I'm really happy. I love being in Tennessee. I think it's just so good for me. I feel relaxed. I feel stoked. Um, I'm turning this property into like the most ridiculous playground for children of all ages. Um, like I said with the archery today, we got in the hot tub and watched a movie on a 30-foot inflatable screen. Tomorrow we're putting up a batting cage. Like I built uh, like the 
this roller rink for my ramp. Um, I bought this, dude, let me just tell you that I'm super stoked on what I call the Radical Ranch. And um, I've been quietly giving updates about the ranch um, on Reddit. I've got my own Stevo Raw. It's uh, this sub R slash Stevo Raw. And um, it's a small community of like 7,000, you know, which compared to like social media numbers, like it's tiny, but like those are my people that I'm giving special updates to. And my street team should all be there. Um, I hope you're having a great day because gosh, I'm having a really great day today. And I love you. Thank you for sticking around. Yeah.